One of the most important aspects of business success is sales. Without sales, your business ceases to exist. Interestingly, it's one of the things that most business owners want more of. Here's the thing. It might be what we want more of, but ask yourself, how do you actually feel about salespeople yourself? When I say the word salesperson, what words come to mind first? For some of you, it's used car salesman, con artist, pushy, or sleazy. For others, it's educator, helpful, good with product knowledge. If you are wanting to make headway and improve your sales, you firstly need to address the belief that you and your team have about salespeople. As with most beliefs, it's what we believe to be true, yet there may not actually be any truth to the matter at all. Just a perspective from what our environment may have influenced us with. Now, over the years, I've heard so many stories from clients or their staff saying that they're not good at selling or they don't respect salespeople. The question I ask is, so how do you feel about your customers buying from competition? Inevitably, I get, I would hate that because they don't treat their customers very well or they don't have the knowledge that we have. Yet their beliefs around sales is the very thing that deters customers rather than attracting them. So what can you do to give yourself and your team the best chance of attracting sales opportunities, converting them and having happy customers who keep coming back? There are two things that make a difference to sales results and their confidence and certainty. So let's start with confidence. This is made up of how you see yourself. The easiest way to change your confidence levels in selling is to increase your knowledge and your awareness of yourself and how you come across to the customer, bearing in mind that customers buy based on how you make them feel. If they even smell fear or get a whiff of insecurity, then they'll come up with a reason not to buy from you, commonly known as an objection, which sounds like, I need time to think about this, I have to speak with my partner, I can't afford it, and so on. What can you do to increase your confidence in yourself? Well, number one is read books, undertake sales courses. Doctors, accountants, pilots, teachers, builders, and other professionals undertake continual education, yet most salespeople don't. Number two, understand how people relate to you. Learn your communication style. We use a tool called DISC Profiling. It allows you to understand the way you communicate and how you best should communicate with others so they actually know and like you. Number three, become a master observer. By this I mean listen and watch how you show up. Do you dress with confidence? Are you being authentic? Are the words that come out of your mouth a true reflection and representation of your brand and yourself? Number four, improve your identity. By this I mean acknowledge the results that you are currently getting are a reflection of who you currently see yourself as. Often this is triggered from a subconscious level, so to overcome this, you'll need to develop a page of, I call them I am statements, that clearly articulate what you need to be saying to yourself on a daily basis so that you can reprogram your thinking. So here's an example. I am continually educating myself to improve my sales knowledge. I am becoming a confident and engaging salesperson. I am respected for my product knowledge and ability to identify my potential clients' needs. I am attracting great opportunities to my business, and so on. Number five. You may not think that you can be a great salesperson, but really all you need to be great is to be asking questions that have your customer admit that your product is the answer to their problem. To do this, you must be comfortable and confident to ask questions that uncover the true problem that the customer has. Now this takes guts and practice. Are you up for the challenge? The next element to consider following on from confidence is certainty. Now these are the physical sales-based doing actions that you need to do so that you get measurable results. Number one, clearly document your sales process. What happens at each step of the way? You and your sales team should know this off by heart. Number two, when you know your sales steps, then focus only on the next step rather than fast forwarding to the end and expecting the sale. 
A great example of why this is important can be seen in a game of football. How often do you see a player who looks like he is planning to catch the ball? Yet when he drops it, you actually realise that he was probably thinking about what he was going to do with it before he actually caught it. Number three, conversion rate is an important measurement for a salesperson. As I mentioned in the last point, each step is one small part of the sales process and each part needs to be converted so that you can progress to the next stage. Don't get ahead of yourself. Remember people are less likely to give you objections or suffer buyer's remorse when they feel like they've chosen to buy rather than being sold to. So what do you need to do to improve in the areas of confidence and certainty so that you can have your customers choose you rather than your competition.